All right, a tremendous honor for a Bay Area scientist who played a key role in a major nuclear fusion breakthrough. Andy Kreitzer, a design physicist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, has been named of one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world. Last year, Kreitzer's expertise helped engineers create the first ever fusion reaction in a laboratory that produced more energy than it took to start the reaction. This milestone is considered an important step towards creating limitless clean energy. And Annie Kreitzer joins us live tonight <laughs> to talk more about this uh, recognition. First off, congratulations uh, from, from all of us here at KTVU. It's a pleasure to have you on tonight. <laughs> what, what does it yeah, mean? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, what, what does this mean to you to be named one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world? Yeah, this is this is amazing. It's sort of surreal. Um, I'm humbled to be on the list with all the other amazing influence on there, in, influencers. Um, I'm honored to be representing the ignition result and the entire team. Um, it's just a really awesome time for me. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Annie, I mean, this when this was announced, this breakthrough was something that had been long achieved, but never achievable. What has it been like to be a part of it? And explain a little bit about your role. Sure. So it's a, it has been a lot of trial and error and a lot of failures and learning from those failures and tried to make improvements for the next experiment. So it has been really, really difficult. And we've been working on this for decades and many, many people. Um, so finally achieving this goal was just tremendous for the entire fusion community. It's, it's no words can explain. Um, my goal, my role on this last experiment was to design the input conditions to the experiment. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to fuse together two isotopes of hydrogen. So smashing two hydrogens together to make another nucleus and release an, a, a large amount of energy in the process. Um, but to reach the conditions where we can do that, we have to get to temperatures hotter than the center of the sun, much hotter than that. And so we're trying to create miniature stars in the laboratory to do this, to get to these fusion conditions. Um, and so we have to get to just the right plasma conditions uh, to have these enough reactions go off. And so my job as a designer is to define what the target that we're shooting and also exactly how the laser is going to hit the target so that we can create these miniature stars in the laboratory. Did you think you were, you were going to create the, this nuclear fusion reaction, what you had been working toward when, when it happened, or were you, were you surprised that you got to that point so soon? So we did have predictions that it would, of course, uh, um, there was a reason we did the experiments. We thought that it was going to improve the yield compared to the, the fusion energy output compared to the prior experiments. Um, but every time you do an experimental test, you, you never know. There could always be a new hurdle to overcome, a new thing that you discover that you have to work around or fix. And so the fact that we were finally there and we finally got it to go off, so to speak, was um, it, it still is a surprise and it still is this yeah. amazing feel, feeling of, okay, finally now we're there. <laughs> okay, yeah, and now that we are here, I mean, explain what happens next in America's quest for clean power. That's a great question. So uh, this ignition experiment is a proof of principle experiment. So it's sort of analogous to a Wright Brothers moment where we know now nothing is fundamentally limiting getting uh, fusion energy out in a controlled laboratory setting. Um, so at the NIF, it's a research facility, and we're going to continue to study these plasmas, study these stars, try to increase the amount of fusion energy output. Um, and there's many uh, private public partnerships and many different approaches that are all sort of energized by this result. And so we're going to continue to push on all fronts. Uh, so how far do you think we are away from, from ha being able to sort of scale up this reaction that you all were able to create in the laboratory to create sort of this just this this unlimited emission free energy? It's hard to put a time frame on something like this uh, because it's also been such a research effort. Um, now we're, we're hoping things will get accelerated as the private and, and public come together and try to make this happen faster. Um, there's a lot of kind of engineering developments that need to happen. We've already made significant improvements to the laser. So all the pieces are starting to come together and uh, you know we could go fast with, with enough people kind of on board and supporting this.
All right. Well, it's been a real Incredible pleasure work. to talk with you. Yeah. yeah. And really amazing to think about what you've been able to accomplish. Obviously, uh, an, an honor well deserved. Thank you again, Annie, for joining us tonight. Yeah. yeah thank you very much.